friend. Good morning, good morning, WWFM family. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. Well, guess what? Today we're going to be introduced to the word of God again and again and again. And guess who's doing that today? Someone who I consider a father, a friend, a big brother. There's so many hats that he wears. You know, whenever Wednesday's coming up, I call it the Boom Wednesday. You know why? Because the word of God will be released. And so this morning is such a joy and such an honor and such a privilege for me to introduce to you a man who I consider my spiritual father, Apostle Colin Eziboom. God bless you, Rev. God bless you. God bless you. That's a great introduction. Sometimes I look around to see who they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Introductions are made. Well, it is a joy to be on the Word is Working for Me uh, network. I'm going to get right into it. Thank uh, Apostle Gaspar for this privilege and the opportunity to be able to dispense the Word of God. Exodus 11 and verse number four. I'm going to read like two or three or four passages of scripture, beginning with Exodus chapter 11 and verse four. And so here I go. And Moses said, Thus said the Lord, about midnight will I go into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon the throne, even unto the firstborn of the maid servant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts, and there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall it be any more. At midnight I will go out and I will strike the firstborn. Let's look to Psalm 119. Psalm 119 and verse number 62. And see what it says there. Psalm 119, 62. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, verse 61 says, but I have not forgotten thy law. At midnight, I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgment. At midnight, I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgment. And then we flip on over to Acts chapter 16 and verse number 25. I'm going to read the preceding verses. I'm going to read verse number 20 and read right on Acts chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 20 and going onwards to verse number 25. And they brought them to the magistrate, that's Paul and Silas, saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city. They were accused of uh, creating insurrection in the city. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, because we are Roman. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrate rent or tore their clothes and commanded them to be beaten. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in stocks, he padlocked their feet in stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's band was loosed. 
Suddenly there was a great earthquake. It came at midnight. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open. <clears throat> and everyone's bands were loose. And the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep. And seeing the prison doors open. Drew out his sword. And would have killed himself. Supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried out with a loud voice saying. Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. And he called for a light, uh, sprang into the jail and saw that everybody was there and asked Paul, what do I have to do to be saved? What must I do to be a believer and got baptized and washed, their, uh, washed Paul's wounds, etc., etc. And I'm going to take it from there. Today I'm talking about Midnight warfare or praying at 12 a.m., 12 p.m. And while everyone else is fast asleep, you find that that hour, that inopportune time to pray and to seek the face of God. Look, there are some breakthroughs that are not negotiable. There are some breakthroughs that you need. And you can't compromise with anything and anybody about that breakthrough. You move forward by God's fire that's lit inside of you because your breakthrough is not negotiable. I'm not going to negotiate this one. This is a must have. This is a must happen. This is one of those situations that if I don't get victory, I'm going to die. Something strategic will die in me. This is one of those things that can derail my destiny. And so I'm not gonna sit at the negotiating table and hammer out terms with the adversary. I must win this one. And I have no intentions of nego negotiating. You're saying in this hour, that the power that promoted Joseph must promote me. The thing that changed in the life of Joseph must change. My story must change. And I'm willing to pay the price. I'm willing to be awake and alert at a time when most men are tired and their eyes are heavy with sleep. I'm going to use that time to war a good warfare. My midnight warfare for my destiny. It must happen. My midnight warfare for my nation. It must happen. In Psalms 119 and verse 62, there's a mystery to the midnight prayer and thanksgiving. The, the, the man said, at midnight, I will rise and give thanks. So. Rise means that he was either asleep or resting. And when midnight struck, at an hour when everyone else is dozing off or snoring, he decides to rise up and to give thanks to God. There's a mystery that is connected to the midnight hour. Oh, yes, yes. And in Acts chapter 16 and verse 25, the scripture that we read with Paul and his companion and the prisoners and the prison warder, there is something mysterious about the midnight hour. And the question is as to why Paul and Silas chose that time to make their prayers and their requests and to sing their songs. And in the stillness of the night, the Bible says, the prisoners heard them. Why? because it was the quiet time of night, midnight. And so everybody got up from their sleep to hear these men singing praises unto God and making prayers unto him. It must have been quite a witness for you to be deep in your sleep and all of a sudden, I don't know who sang alto, soprano or brass or, or bass or what they sang. But what I do know is they sang loud enough to awaken slumbering men from their sleep. 
and to make them pay attention and listen at midnight. Oh, blessed be the Lord. And I'm saying that a lot of times as a, as a church, as people who are in the kingdom of God, we do exactly what the world does. What does the world do? They go to sleep. 12 is not the time for people to be awake between the hours of 12 and three o'clock. Man, that's when we have, as it were, our deepest sleep, REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. Uh, we say in our vernacular, I've gone to China, I've gone to Paris, I've gone to Coven John, some people would say in, in, in their uh, attempt to rhyme, gone to Coven John. And what they're saying is at 12 o'clock is not the time. You're not going to find me awake. You're not going to find me alert. I am dozed off. I am knocked out. I am zonked out. I'm gone. I'm in dreamland. I'm in la la land. And it takes, it takes quite a lot of discipline on anybody's part to want to understand and learn the mystery of the midnight hour, the mystery of the midnight prayer, and also the mystery as to why the satanic world is so interested in moving between the hours of 12 and 3 a.m. And so night, night. Night is the absence of light. When you're in the night season, you have pretty little information, very little insight. Night is the absence of light. Night is dark. Night is a time of blindness. Night is a time of stumbling. Yes, yes. The time of blindness. It's a time of the absence of light. It's a time of darkness. Jesus said, I must work the works of him who has sent me while it is day. And then hear this part, he says, for the night cometh when no man shall be able to work. And so what he's actually saying in that day and time, in that day and time, because in our day and time, we have floodlights to take care of that. In that day and time, night was unsuitable for labor. It was unsuitable for work. It was unsuitable for productivity. Unsuitable. It was an unsuitable time. So Jesus said, while it is day, I must work. I must make the most of the day because when night comes, it becomes unsuitable to rest. And so night was designed then for resting for some well-earned and well-deserved shut eye. It is not designated for activity. At the time when Paul lived, it was not designated for labor. It was not designated for toil. And so it was designed for rest. And all who rest at midnight and beyond were doing what was normal, what was acceptable in that day and time and in that culture. Night the absence of light, the dark times, are favorable for wickedness. No wonder the scripture teaches that men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. And when you want to do evil, night is a favorable time for wickedness. Glory to God. Wild animals move by night. Because they have, as we know now, night vision. They, they hunt for food. They hunt. They go out to gather and to be able to take care of their young. Wild animals move by night. Uh, thieves operate by night. So night is a time of calamity. Night is a time of distress. Night is a time of woe. Night is a time of loss. Night is a time of harm. Night is a time when thieves operate because they can ply their trade shrouded in the mystique and mystery of the darkness. Darkness, therefore, is not a positive creature. Darkness is not a creature that cooperates with you. And therefore, for you to be able to rise up 
and deal with a creature that is not favorable to you and use that unfavorable time, use that time that is unsuitable for labor to do your spiritual warfare, to do your uh, decrees and declaration against the dark world that fights against you. It would take a tremendous amount of discipline, which in a lot of times, uh, folks that belong to the church, they have a problem with that. Darkness is not a positive creature. Darkness, night, is a time of danger. It's a time when, as we just said, wild animals roar. And you can be in danger by your inability to see the abyss, your inability to see the 10 foot fall that you're about to step off a cliff because you're not aware of what's ahead of you because the darkness is not cooperating with you. Night is a time of danger. Oh, yes, yes. The Bible talks about the farmer that sowed in his field. And it says, and while men slept, an enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat. Let me break that down to you. He sowed good seeds in his farm. And while men slept, the midnight hour is the time when men sleep. And when they're in, as it were, their deepest sleep. And so it's a time of danger. While men slept, an enemy came. The enemy loves to use the midnight hour to plan his plan and to execute his plan. What's the point? The point is, while you and I are asleep at 12 o'clock, the satanic world is programming the next day. The satanic world is programming the next week. The satanic world is programming your rising moments, which is around 7, 8 o'clock to 12 a.m. or on to 4 o'clock of the next day. The enemy, while you are sleeping, is working out his strategy, is very strategic, very cunning, very crafty as to what he's going to do the next day. He is programming into tomorrow what calamity will strike you. And at that hour, you are fast asleep. The enemy uses the hour, the darkness, to sow tears among the wheat. It's not that wheat is not there. Wheat is there, but all of a sudden, a foreign element is introduced. It is during your sleep time that foreign elements are introduced and you get up the next day with a sense of evil foreboding. You have in your heart of hearts that sense that something is going to go wrong. What happened? You went to bed, everything was hunky-dory. What happened? Your spirit is trying to alert you that while you were fast asleep, the satanic world was busy planning plotting, scheming, and strategizing to bring you flat on your face. That's that sixth sense. That's that spider senses tingling. That's that sense of evil foreboding. That's that sense of something is going to go wrong today. I can't put my finger on it, but I have that funny, familiar, forgotten feeling. <laughs> Oh, glory to God. What, what is my, what is my uh, motive for this message today? My motive is I want to elaborate on what darkness is and what darkness does. And then I want to say to us, we can use that dark time, that 12 in the midnight hour time, because the midnight changes the day. It changes Wednesday into Thursday. It changes Thursday into Friday. That millisecond from 11.59.59 to 11.60 or 12, it changes the day. And so strategic changes are occurring at the midnight hour, and we want to be alert at a time of strategy so that we can implement kingdom strategy and prevent the satanic world from working out their equation as to what will happen the next day. We can preempt their strike. We can prevent their strike. We can minimize their mischief. 
we can nullify their evil. We can introduce other elements that are detrimental to the satanic world so that their mischievous hands cannot perform their evil enterprise. We also, God's kingdom people, have to be able to be disciplined enough to use that darkest of times to introduce kingdom light and to be in intense intercession, intense prayer, intense spiritual warfare, and as it were, the violent will now take it by force. And so, the night is not a positive feature. It's a time of danger. The night is a time when you stumble, when you're silent, when there's deep darkness. The night is a time when activity is limited. Your activities are limited. You cannot do as much. And yet, the demonic world uses the time when you can't do as much to do as much as they possibly can, mapping out tomorrow and all of the pitfalls and all of the enemies that will rise up against you, strategizing now in a moment when we, by tradition, have said, you can't do much. If kingdom people can't do much at midnight, why is the satanic world so busy at midnight doing as much as they can possibly do? I'm calling for midnight warfare. And what I'm saying is at least once a week, at least once a week, you got to start somewhere. So I'm not starting saying every night at midnight. No, I'm not. No, I'm not giving you a hard assignment. I'm giving us an easy assignment. Once a week, pick a day. Pick any day. And if you miss it, don't feel guilty. If you miss it, pick another day. Or if you're up at midnight for some reason on a day that you didn't pick, utilize that time. Maximize that time. Get on your knees at 12 o'clock. Don't stay there too long because most of us will fall asleep because we have not yet learned the discipline of midnight prayer. Now hear me and hear me strong. Whenever you incorporate into your Christian walk, into your Christian life, another spiritual discipline, like now you're going to incorporate the discipline of praying at midnight at least once a week. All right. Now here's the danger of praying at midnight once a week. Here is the danger of deciding to get serious with your prayer life. Here is the danger. When your spiritual activity activates, when your spiritual activity increases, when your spiritual activity improves, when your spiritual activity grows, here's the kicker. A demonic agency is now assigned to curb your enthusiasm, to stop you from growing in that spiritual discipline. And if they can't stop you from doing it, then they will give you a shove. All of a sudden, you start having vision and dreams and you start hearing voices. And because you weren't trained at that hour to deal with the elements that move in that dark time, you assume that every voice you hear is the voice of God. I have seen a lot of people begin to pray more seriously and it's almost like they become a Christian fanatic, a negative type of fanaticism. They start hearing voices. Uh, the Lord spoke to me. And sometimes what they said the Lord spoke to them doesn't line up with the scripture. And if you try to get them aligned with scripture, they get upset. Like, oh, oh so you're, you're just jealous because the Lord is not speaking to you. There are dangers when you improve spiritual activities in your life because it activates other satanic elements who come along to try to stop you from going ahead or push you so hard that you go into fanaticism. You walk a very delicate rope, a tight rope as it were, when you improve spiritual activity. And so you've got to go into the improving spiritual activity, but be wise enough to have somebody who knows what time it is, someone who has walked that road before, so you can get guidance and not become a casualty of prayer. A casualty of prayer 
People can become a casualty of prayer. Rev, what nonsense are you talking about? No, no, it's not nonsense. I've seen people get into fasting and the fasting becomes almost like an idol. Oh, you don't fast as often as I do? Next thing you know, you got a fanatic on your hand and they can't handle the trials and tribulations that comes with and comes to a person that has been fasting and praying on a regular basis. Satanic activity activates when your spiritual activity activates. As you grow and stretch, you attract bigger principalities. These small, small demons that you used to deal with and rebuke them in the, with the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus, these ones that come to you now are not impressed. They are going to test you. They are going to prove whether you're serious enough to handle this thing. All of a sudden, familiar spirits start coming around. And you do hear voices. You do begin to dream dreams. You do begin to see things. I'm not saying you're not seeing things. I'm not saying you're not hearing voices. You are. But the trick is to know, is this the voice of God? A. Eh? Is it in alignment with the scripture? Is it in alignment with what God has told me that he has called me to do? Because all of a sudden, your destiny is threatened into derailment because the Lord called you to be an evangelist, but here's this voice telling you you're a mighty prophet and start to show you a few things. And you believe that because you saw uh, something that's going to come to pass tomorrow or next week, that you are in the prophetic ministry and you are derailed from your real evangelistic call. So there are some dangers when you add to your arsenal, when you pick up another weapon, the danger is you can cut yourself with a sword unless somebody teaches you how to use it and teaches you what to do with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And so uh, darkness limits activity. Darkness separates. Why am I giving you all the negatives about darkness? Because I want you to know when you take on that midnight prayer, what you're taking on. I want you to be aware that there are a lot of moving parts here. And when you add that once a week midnight prayer, you're going to be attracting uh, news in the dark kingdom. And they will be telling each other in the front page, uh, welcome is on midnight warfare now once a week. So we got to send two more devils to try to prevent him from growing in that and becoming a giant in that and then raising up others in that. So we've got to be aware that the spirit realm is aware of your intention. Darkness limits activity. Darkness separates. Darkness is a time when evil comes out. They come out to play. Darkness is a time when evil is let loose. Men love darkness because their deeds are evil. Darkness is a time when people get harmed. Darkness is a time that is conducive for satanic operation. Darkness is a time of the witchcraft coven coming out. Darkness is a time when iniquity flourishes. Darkness is a time of the wandering spirits. They're looking for bodies that they can go into and possess. Darkness is a time of the forest spirit. Darkness is a time of the activity of evil angels. Darkness is a time of occultic power. They rise up and they are about to get cracking, get going, get moving. Darkness is a time of spirit wives and spirit husbands. Incubus and succubus are roaming. Darkness is a time of ancestral spirits being activated. Darkness is a time. When pestilences walk, the pestilence that walk by night. Darkness is a time of wicked personalities on evil assignments. It's a time of evil assignments and there are wicked personalities that are out to perform these evil assignments. The Bible talks about the terror by night. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. It talks about the terror by night. It's a time of terror. It's a time of smiting. It's a time of pestilence. 
It's a time of witchcraft power. It's a time of ancestral strong men. It's a time of recruitment where satanic agents are recruiting for Satan, leaving some of their smell, their paraphernalia. They are trying to merge with you. They're trying to forge covenants with you. And when they come visiting you at night, they leave some of their satanic aroma so that they can find their way back to you. There's an evil planting that was not planted by the Lord. And that tree begins to grow at night under the cover of darkness. Darkness is a time of night caterers. Darkness is a time of dream manipulators. Darkness is a time of the powers from the moon that strikes by night. Darkness is a time of satanic agents. Darkness is a time of the diviners. It's a period of severe calamity. It's a period of uncomfortableness, limiting of your activity. Criminals prowl at night. Iniquity flourishes at night. And when all of these dark forces and dark powers are arrayed against the people of God, against the kingdom of God, here comes an unlearned, unskilled child of God rising up at midnight to challenge all that I just mentioned. And I mentioned them because I want you to know what you're up against. Now, I know greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So we take heart on that. We are not afraid of the powers of darkness. We just want to have a healthy respect for what we are taking on. Because no man can go to a battle and unless he first sits down and counts the cost. And then after he has counted the cost and understands that he can finish, then he will begin to build. Or else you start and then you're unable to finish because you didn't quite go through all of the points to know what you're up against. Oh, glory to God. But here is Paul and Silas at midnight. And their prayers at midnight. I'm talking about midnight warfare. I'm talking about spiritual warfare at midnight. I'm talking about using the midnight hour as a time when you are going to block demonic uh, agendas for you, for your church, for your business, for the work of your hands. You're not going to allow them to program their satanic programming because you are up at midnight as a blocker, as a stopper, as a hinderer, as a preventer. Oh, yes, yes. As someone who is going to bind and loose what you want to see. As a, someone who's going to program your day and not allow satanic agents to program your day for you. When Paul began to sing and pray at midnight, they suspended the enemy's movement. All that Satan had planned for them for the next day were going to be suspended because the jailer was going to wash their wounds and get baptized instead of more evil happening to Paul and his companions. They were going to receive prayer revelation from God. Prayer revelation on what the enemy has planned and plotted. Prayer revelation on what the enemy was scheming for them. But had they not prayed, they would not have been recipients of revelation that comes at midnight prayers that don't come in any other kinds of prayer. There's nothing more beautiful than revelation, than being the recipient of a word from God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The spirit of the sleeping man is weak and vulnerable and susceptible to spirits that have had thousands of years of practice as to how they can encroach and connect themselves and attach themselves to men in their most vulnerable state when they are weak and fast asleep. These spirits move at night. They are familiar. They are familiar evil satanic agents. They are occultic spirits. They are diviners and night caterers. They are seed sores at night. While men slept, an enemy came and sowed tears at midnight when they slept. A sleeping church is a great attraction for midnight farmers, for night farmers. What do you mean night farmers? Night farmers are evil spirits that sow seeds that will bring forth tears instead of bringing forth wheat and try to choke the wheat. Night farmers, night caterers, 
Oh, yeah. It is said, and I'm just saying what is said, that the hour of 12 p.m. to 3 a.m. have a high traffic of spiritual transaction. It is interesting that Samson got up at midnight to take away the gates of Gaza. He waited for the darkest period. It's a time of tremendous activity because no one expects you to be awake and alert and ready to do mischief against the kingdom of darkness, ready to do damage. Are you feeling a brother now? We must learn during this high traffic of spiritual transactions. Spiritual transactions are taking place between the hours of 12 and 3 a.m. What if your name is on a couple of those transactions? Can you stop it? Yes, you can. Can you block it? Yes, you can. But not if you're asleep all the time. If you're unaware, if you're fast asleep, if you are weak and vulnerable during your sleep time, we must learn as a, as a child of God, as people of the kingdom, to utilize this time, the hour of 12 to 3, for strategic breakthroughs. This, the principle is laid out in Exodus 11 verse 4. God picked midnight to tell the children of Israel, look, at midnight, I'm going to move amongst Pharaoh's people. And I'm going to be wiping out the firstborn. It is interesting that God utilized this particular time to do what he was going to do. He picks midnight to smite the firstborn. And you and I are aware that Satan is a counterfeiter that he doesn't have any original, but he's good at photocopying. And so if God is going to do stuff at midnight, guess what Satan is going to do? Like God, he's going to do stuff at midnight too. He's following the pattern. He doesn't have an original idea. He's following God's pattern. God picks midnight to smite the firstborn. And Saul, Paul and Silas were going to use midnight as a time of freedom. They were in stocks. They were in an inner jail. There was an outer jail, an inner jail. And then even though they were in the inner jail, the guard put their feet in stocks, chained their feet to the ground, to the floor, to the wall, to prevent them from having any ideas about escaping. Oh, yeah. And God chose that darkest hour of the night to bring freedom to Paul and Silas the Bible says the earthquake shook up the jail and opened up. All the doors were open. Now, there are times when in life, some doors are open. The doors for a job, that's open. The doors for good health, that's open. The doors for family and friends, that's open. But the doors to marriage, that's closed. And there are other times, the doors to marriage, that's open. The doors to health. That's open. The doors to friends, that's open. The doors to a proper job to earn good wages, to pay your bills and do whatever investments you want to do, that door is closed. And sometimes the door to a good job is open. The door to a good marriage is open. But the door to good health, that door is closed. And so there, there are rarely times, there are rarely times when all of the doors are open. But pay attention here. At this midnight hour, when Paul and his companion chose that time to get in the face of God, because of the unusual nature of the hour, and because of all that they were up against and having been beaten and the rest of it, they should have been complaining and murmuring. But since they had the nerve, A, to engage God at midnight, then God says, I've got to do something unusual for them. If they had never had all of the doors in their life open, I'm going to do it now. I'm opening all the doors. Midnight has the power to open all the doors when God's supernatural power and agency is engaged by humanity. All the doors. 
And I'm saying and saying it ahead of time because I know a lot of you, you are going to try it. You're going to try the midnight prayer and see if things change or see if things shake, rattle and roll. And therefore I'm making a declaration with apostolic authority and prophetic rage. May the Lord God of heaven open up all the doors for us because we have had seven doors open, one door closed. Six doors open, one door closed. Five doors open, the sixth door closed. Six doors open, the seventh door closed. There's always that one door that's giving us all kinds of trouble. And it, no matter what we do, that door just didn't open for us until now. And I'm saying I'm joining my faith and aligning it with your faith. If two of us shall agree, on the earth as touching anything, it shall be done. One shall chase a thousand, but two shall put 10,000 to flight. And I'm saying out now, may the God of heaven cause all of the doors to open up now in the name of Jesus as a sign that your efforts to pray at midnight and to have midnight warfare will be rewarded in manner and ways that you have not had happen to you before. May doors that have never opened for you begin to open now. May the doors begin to swing on their hinges. May doors that have not opened up in decades, open up in days, open up in hours, open up in minutes. May you be the recipient of all open doors that everywhere you turn, it seems like you're a magnet and an attraction for good things to happen to you. Oh yes, I'm joining with you. I'm aligning myself with you. And I'm saying, Lord, open all of the doors for us. I'm putting my name there. I'm dropping my face in that list of prayer and list of people that want God to open all the doors, open the doors of marriage, open the doors of finances, open the doors of business success, open the doors of good health, open the doors of ministry anointing, open the doors for the gifts of the spirit to be in operation, open the doors for souls to be saved, open the doors for souls to be added, open the doors for me to have the right attitude when I deal with people, open the door to heal me of all my drama and my trauma and my stress. Oh, Lord God, for thou hast made the heavens and earth by thy great power and by thy outstretched arm. There is nothing that is too difficult for thee. You are the great and the mighty God, the one who's great in your counsel and mighty in your deed. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing is too difficult for you to do. Ah, Lord God, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Nothing is too hard for God to do. We rebuke the heart. We chase away the heart. And we quote the scripture where Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. May God break the hex, break the vex, break the jinx, break the spell, break the curse, break the disease, break the infirmity, break the malady, break the abnormality, break the malfunction, break the jinx, break the tumors, break the growth, break the boils. May God remove all of the toxic poisons and metals out of your bloodstream in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. May all the doors open. Hey, I felt that one. Do something wonderful in the lives of your children. As they look to you, the autumn finish of their faith. They have been lied to. They have been conned. They have been tricked. Do it for them anyhow. Some did it stubbornly anyhow. They did it knowingly. But have mercy, thou power of God, and open all the doors. Let areas of restriction begin to give way. Let walls of confinement and containment begin to give way. Let walls give way. Let them fall flat like the walls of Jericho. Lord, rebuke the enemy's work. Rebuke the enemy's hindrances. Get him out of the way. Let your people have seasons of accelerated progress, seasons of accelerated blessing, seasons when they know that this is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes, seasons when they know if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, I would never have come to this place of success. I would never have gotten here so far. Thou power of God, move. Hey, 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 hey. I'm feeling the anointing for intercession. I don't know what happened. What we just touched something there. I just touched a spot right there. Hey, glory adios, man. Glory to God. Utilize this time for strategic breakthrough. What time? The midnight hour. Late in the midnight hour. God's going to turn it around. Remember that song? <laughs> uh, glory. God used the worst and darkest hour to bring the greatest time of freedom breaking the bondage from off of their taskmasters, breaking them free from off of their taskmasters, 
opening doors of their taskmasters are deliberately shut and shut twice. It was like a verily, verily. It was like saying you can never escape because we have made sure you're not only in jail, you're in the inner jail. You're not only in the inner jail, your feet are chained to the, to the floor, chained to the walls, chained with big, fat, strong chains. You are not going anywhere. May God cause you to move at a high rate of speed in areas where your enemies have said you are not going anywhere. I touch that spot in our lives where we seem to be not going anywhere, where we have put out a lot of effort and have received very little remuneration. May God arise and the enemy be scattered. May God get the glory. May God yet get the victory. May God snatch victory from the very jaws of defeat. May your ball, Samson, begin to grow here in the name of Jesus. May your poison in the pot be cured by the power of the living God. May your iron float. May your iron swim. May your Red Sea part. May God cause your stone to find the forehead of Goliath. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Glory, glory. Glory, adios, man. Glory, adios. Glory to God in the highest. May God break it. May God shake it. May God send an earthquake to shake everything that could not be shaken. Everything that would not be shaken. Everything that was not shaken prior to that time. May God time the movement to the movement at the time when you begin to pray. That it seemed like your prayer at midnight was the key. That your sacrifice was the key. That God saw your sacrifice. He saw your pain. He saw your tears. And said to himself, I will arise and do good for my children. May the good hand of God go out to work for you. May the good hand of God go out to work for me. May the good hand of God go out to work for us. May June, this month of June, not come to an end until you have seen your breakthrough, until you have seen your breakout, until you have seen your destiny helper, until you have seen the blessings that eluded you for decades and decades and decades. May your ship come in. May your proverbial ship come in. May God break it for you. May God open the road for you. May God send a, send a flight for you. May God open up the visa for you to get it. May God send the people to assist you with a ticket. May God arise and the enemy be scattered. Hey, 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 hey. Kabosai. Mandoro katabakashi. Hey. God is moving here right now. No fun, no joke. I'm not making it up. God is in this place and he's standing right next to you. That wind that you felt was the presence of God. That's the sense that somebody's in the room. That's the presence of God. That thing that you saw like a shadow that passed, that ain't no duppy. <laughs> the angelic hosts are activated to go forth and to make happen to you that which they were supposed to do a long time ago. The angels are sent to minister for us who are heirs of salvation. We dispatch angels and we say to them, go and bring to us that which the Lord God Yahweh wanted us to have anyhow. All that has eluded us in time past, make it happen sooner than at once and quicker than immediately. In el nombre de Jesucristo. Somebody shout a good hallelujah out there. So, I can't see you, but look, man, shout a good hallelujah. And may God respond to your shout and cause your wall of Jericho to fall down flat. Hey, 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 hey. May your Mm, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. In Judges chapter 16 and verse number three, Samson lay until it was midnight. And then he took out the doors and the gates. He uprooted the gates. He destroyed the stronghold of the enemy. At midnight, your giants shall be destroyed. At midnight, the gates that hold you and contain you shall be broken down. May God break the power of containment. May God break you from confinement. May God get you away from pause. May God cause all of the spider webs that have trapped your spirit and have you in a holding pattern that you have not have flown for decades. You have not been lifted off the ground. You're always in a holding pattern. And your efforts have brought very little result, very little victory. You're exhausted by the constant labor and little to show for it. May God bring us to that place where all that has trapped us for decades is broken off now. I break off the traps. I break off the traps. I break the snares. I break the foulest trap. In the name of Jesus, I release your spirit from all of the confining powers. In every area where you are confined and contained, I loose you. I loose us from areas of confinement and containment, and I command and demand that there shall be movement 
hey, 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 hey. Movement, man. I said movement. Movement in the name of Jesus. Movement by the power of the living God. May God move you from where you are to where he wants you to be. May your destiny explode. May your destiny explode. May it explode. May it explode. May it explode. May, it explode. May the word work for you. May the word that come out of my mouth work for you. May the prophetic edge of this word cut down the tree that the Lord did not plant in your life. May the prophetic edge that is in my mouth right now tear down the walls of Jericho. May the prophetic edge that is in my mouth right now cause you to go to the pit in winter and kill the young lion. Glory to God. May God give you achievements and accomplishments that you never had before. The people who know you are shocked with surprise that you were able to pull it off. Because they all had said to themselves, he will never make it. She will never do it. We have confined her. We have contained her. She is not coming back from that. And like Lazarus from the dead, here you come. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. May God raise your Lazarus and free him from the grave. Close. Hi, hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Samson waited until midnight. He waited for the darkest hour. When no one thought he could pull it off and tore up the gates of Gaza, carried them away. Yes, in Ruth 3 and 8, Boaz, <laughs> Boaz welcome, discovered his at midnight. The Bible says that uh, Naomi told Ruth, look, dress yourself. What got you here will not get you there. You've got to change something. Your attitude has got to change. There's got to be some adjustment. I can say safely, 2021 to 2023 have been seasons of adjustments and the likes of which I have not seen. I could adjust something yesterday and, and here's the Lord coming again, talking to me about adjusting something today. And by time this afternoon, when I have adjusted this, he's talking to me about adjusting something else this afternoon. And before I go to bed tonight, he's talking about, I have, it's like I'm in a blender. It's like I am in the heater that, you know, you put the clothes in, so they tumble and tumble and the heat dries them the dryer it's like having a dryer and a blender at the same time where the lord is speaking and, and you got to change quick you got to respond quick and change stuff change stuff change stuff <laughs> quite an interesting time mm. yesterday afternoon the lord spoke to me he said son i said yes lord he said show me your management <laughs> I cannot believe what he was saying to me. I said, come on, Lord, I'm your boy. I'm your boy. He said, yeah, I know you're my boy. Show me your management. And literally, he, he, he caused me to have a vision of an area in ministry that I had neglected to tighten up on. And he said, you, you see that? Show me your management on that. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. And this is at the time when I'm making all of these adjustments. The word of the Lord, brethren, is not hard. It's not hard. It is for your own interest. It is for your own progress. The tree that brings forth fruit, he cuts it back. He prunes the tree that is bringing forth fruit. Why? So that it can bring forth more fruit. You would think that when you're at your optimum, when you're at your best, that the Lord will hold back and leave you alone. No. He comes to cut back, to prune you, so you can become more productive, so that more can come out of you. You have more in you when you're at your peak performing and bringing all of these things into manifestation, God is saying, all right, I'm glad you did that, but that's not all you can do. You've got more in you than you ever know. We, we underestimate ourselves most of the time. Oh, let me go on with my message. I got pages of notes here. <laughs> Ruth discovered her husband at midnight. For those who are looking to God for a spouse, midnight would be a good time to discover your spouse, to pray for marriage. Oh, yes. Psalm 119 and verse 62. It's a time of righteous judgment. Acts chapter 16 and verse 25. Paul and Silas were not quiet. Acts chapter 16 and verse 25. Midnight was a time for the release from prison. Everything that's tied up, everything that's in bondage, everything that will not move, everything that's tied up in jail shall not be free. But hey! Glory to you. Hey, 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 hey. Glory to God. Glory to God. I just got hit with 20,000 volts of the has got a quake all of the chains that are behind you. Oh, yes. It's a time for deliverance when the earthquake of God will shake things up. Job 34 and 20. 
It was a time to destroy the destroyer that the mighty are taking away with our hand. Matthew 25 and 6. It was a time when the bridegroom cometh at midnight. It was a time to assess, access, assess, assess. Think about your spiritual life. Things happen at midnight and no evil power must be able to steal it from you. Yes, yes. Luke 11 and 5. It's an hour of asking, seeking, and knocking. Knocking on the doors, asking and seeking. You've got to get a response. Glory to God. Midnight is a time of satanic harassment. While men slept, the enemy came and so tears. But it's also a time of God's mighty and massive deliverance. Yes, yes. In 1 Kings 3 and 20, it was time to catch a thief. The woman stole the baby at midnight after she had slept on hers and the baby died. In other words, the next generation to come, the baby that represented the next generation, the enemy was trying to steal that blessing. He's using the cover of darkness, midnight, to steal the next generation. We cannot allow the next generation to be stolen by the satanic world. We must rise up at midnight at the darkest hour and we must war a good warfare for the honor and for the glory of God so that we can save the next generation so that the wisdom of Solomon can find out that the mother who is really the mother of the child will not want the child to be cut in half. Aye, 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 aye. Somebody better shout another hallelujah. Oh, yes. Yeah. At midnight, the angel came and slew 185,000 and gave the children of God a powerful breakthrough. That which was a sign to disgrace them, that which was a sign to defeat them, that which was a sign to, de to, de to destroy them was destroyed at midnight. 185,000. May the Lord move with the strength and power and move against all that has been assigned to disgrace you. In 2 Kings 6 and 13, they come past the city at night. Oh yes, the time when the enemy wants to come past the city. It's a time of supervising evil. It's a time for perfecting satanic plans. It's a time for the destruction of men's destiny. It's a time for the performance of the evil that's programmed against you. You must scatter them before they get going. You must scatter them before they scatter you. You must not pray after the satanic plans and programs have already been set. You must block them with your midnight prayer. Break them up with your midnight prayer. Uh, confront them with your midnight prayer. Tame them like the, 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 the trainers in the, in the zoo and the trainers in these places that come out to display the animals at the circus. Train them like you have a whip to train satanic lions. You must kill satanic goliaths. You must defeat evil coven and with God's power. Yes, yes. And I'm saying that sometimes you are in a position to command your story to change. Yeah, you have the most powerful weapon, the weapon of prayer. And you must use it at the most strategic time between 12 and 3. You are in a position to command your story to change. And you must command your story to change in spite of all the stocks and the jail and the bonds and the jailer and the inner jail and all of the iron and the chains and bars that they put. You are in a position to command your story to change. And may you join with me in this next minute and command your story, your midnight story, your dark hour story, your darkness that you've gone through for days and some of you for decades, that light will break forth and break in and that you will be released and that no satanic agenda that has been formed and fashioned, no weapon shall prosper against you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak for the implementation of deliberate change, strategic change, story change, generational change. In the name of Christ, the Son of God, health change, health change, wealth change, joy change, peace change, hope change, mind change, ministry change, anointing change. Let power change hands now. And let our midnight prayers and midnight warfare be effective against all of the cohorts and plans of the enemy. For the glory of God, we are praying. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ, over to Boaz, welcome. Hey, Rev. Wow, what a word. What a word. Activated midnight warfare. We want to yes. thank the Lord for Apostle Eziboom this morning. We want to thank the Lord for that bomb. Because every time, I'm, I'm going to name Wednesday now Wednesday bombs. <laughs> I want to thank the Lord for you. And um, we know that the word of God went forth with power. I was there listening. Um, one of the things that I recognize that you said that is key is um, Paul and Silas, those guys, those guys, um, they, they, they had an inward tenacity um, that, that nothing could have stopped them. And I just want to ask you one question before you go. Um, do you think that comes with 
time, experience, growth? Um, is it something that is, is placed on us? Is it something that's constantly with us? That consistency, how, how is that acquired or achieved in the kingdom of God? It was a cultural thing. They knew based on the stories from the Old Testament of many times when Israel was in trouble, when Israel, uh, the people of God were in trouble, and some leader, for some peculiar reason, would get up at midnight. Like, for instance, Samson got up at midnight. Like, for instance, God uh, destroying the firstborn. He did it at mm. midnight. Make sure that midnight doesn't catch you without the blood of the doors and lintel. So they draw from that. We draw from that. In our culture, we don't have too much of anything going for us, so we've got to align ourselves with the real Christian principle and find out what worked for them, because if it worked for them, it will work for us. It is interesting that uh, in the Old Testament, there was a man named Obad, Ob, Ob, Obab, that showed Moses where to walk in the desert because he was a desert man. And um, when Moses was trying to give him a little pit, and he said, no, 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 no. I want to be included in the blessing that comes on Israel. And when Moses went to God, God said, yes, he, he's thinking right. Every blessing that comes to the Jew will come to this guy. And that guy was an African guy. And so we've got to know where to pull from, where to draw from. In other words, the same blessing that is on our Jewish brethren came upon us in view of that man strategically pointing them as to where they could sleep at night because the desert was full of serpents and scorpions and other things that were a danger to the people who had no idea about desert life. All they knew was to mash bricks and make mud and make the pharaohs speak and all the other stuff. So it was a cultural thing to them. And we have got to see into that and draw, uh, learn lessons from them. And incorporate them into our own Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, Apostle. Well, good. So Wednesdays in the books and Thursdays coming up. Tomorrow we're going to be hearing from Apostle Jennifer Chiwi. And I know God has a word in store. God bless you, WWFM family. And thank you very much, Apostle. What a word. Wednesday, boom, is in the books. Bless you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.